Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to go on to something new. We're going to solve equations that contain absolute value signs. And the question is, how do we solve those? And there is indeed a very special technique. For example, when we have the absolute value of x equals 5, what that really implies is that x will equal 5 or x will equal the negative of that, negative 5. And of course, at this point, we're, we already are done because we don't need to go any further. The solution is that x equals 5 or x equals negative 5. We can check and it's always a good idea to check these things. So let's go ahead and plug in our two possible solutions. Let's plug in x equals 5 for that and see what we get. So is the absolute value of 5 equal to 5? And of course that's correct because the absolute value of 5 is indeed 5. What if we plug in the other solution, negative 5? And you can see that the absolute value of negative 5 is equal to a positive 5 and so you can see that matches the solution that we have over there so yes indeed those are the two correct solutions x equals 5 or x equals negative 5 so essentially that becomes technique for example if we have an equation that looks like this we're going to set what's inside the absolute value signs equal to the positive and the negative value of the item on the right so we set 2x minus 4 equal to a positive 8 or 2x minus 4 equal to a negative 8 and then we solve each of those equations for x and then those become the two possible solutions of that equation with the absolute value signs. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 2x minus 4 equals 8 that becomes 2x equals 8 plus 4 when I bring the negative 4 over to the other side it becomes a plus 4. 2x equals 12 divide both sides by 2 we get x is equal to 6. That's one of the solutions, or possible solutions. We do, it the, sa we do the same for the other equation. We have 2x equals negative 8 plus 4. When we bring the negative 4 across, it becomes a positive 4. 2x equals negative 4. Divide both sides by 2. We get x is equal to negative 2. So here are the two possible solutions. Now we're going to plug those into the original equation to see if they indeed give us a correct value. So the absolute value of 2 times 6 minus 4, is that equal to 8? Question mark. And so let's check that out. That gives us 12 minus 4. So that's out the value of 12 minus 4. Is that equal to 8? And sure enough, the absolute value of 8 equals 8. So you know that is correct. How about the other solution? We plug in a negative 2. So the absolute value of 2 times negative 2 minus 4, is that equal to 8? Question mark. And so we work this out. We get negative 4 minus 4. Take the absolute value of that equals 8. And sure enough, negative 8, if we take the absolute value of that, is indeed equal to 8. So both of those seem to work. That means we have the two solutions right there. And again, that's the technique. You take what's inside the absolute value sign and set it equal to the positive and the negative of the value on the right. What do we do when we have something like this? The absolute value of something equals a negative 3. Now that seems kind of odd because by definition, when we take the absolute value of something, we should get a positive value, not the negative value. So that looks suspicious. But let's go through the process as if we ignored that hunch that we have there. And so we're going to set what's inside the absolute value signs equal to the value over here and the negative of that value which would be a positive 3. So we're going to set x equals to negative 3 or we're going to set x equals to a positive 3 and see what happens. So we'll plug these two values in here because we're going to check to make sure that uh, we have this correct. So plug in the absolute value of our first solution negative 3 and is that equal to a negative 3 question mark and we already know that when we take the absolute value of a negative number we get a positive number so 3 does not equal negative 3 so this is not a possible solution let's try the other one the absolute value of a positive 3 is that equal to a negative 3 and again we know that when we take the absolute value sign of a, of a number we get the positive value so you know that is not equal the absolute value of 3 is not equal to negative 3 so therefore this is also not a solution in other words just like we suspected there's no solution to that third equation but the important thing that we learned here is that when we try to solve an equation that have an absolute value sign that looks like this 
where we have the quantity on the left inside an absolute value sign and the number on the right, we're going to set what, inside, what is inside the absolute value sign equal to the positive and the negative value of that. So x equals 5 or x equals negative 5. That will then give you the two possible solutions. The same over here. 2x minus 4 equals to a positive 8 or 2x minus 4 equals to a negative 8. And that's the technique that you're going to use to solve this type of equation. Now, of course, we're going to see some other examples that we need to probably manipulate a little bit differently, but ultimately, we'll end up with the same kind of approach, and you'll see how that's done in the next few examples.